All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, sorry about that. I had a slight mishap where I dropped one of my cameras. That's right, cameras. I have two cameras now. Um, so that's kind of fun. And a new microphone setup. So hopefully it's coming through well. I think I have it adjusted so that it's working correctly. Um, but I suppose that we'll, uh, I suppose I'll find out. So today we're going to be making uh, paella, which is usually, it's a Spanish dish. It's usually made with seafood. I'm not the biggest fan of seafood, so I've never really had it. Um, but I found a recipe that doesn't actually have any seafood in it. And figured that I would give it a shot because that just sounded like a fun thing to do on a Wednesday evening. So the recipe I'm using is from America's Test Kitchen. I've used several of their recipes before. It's, they're pretty great. Uh, I especially like the ones where they're sized for just a couple of people because it actually is for a couple of people. And it really does work out pretty well. So what we're going to get started with is, uh, number one, we're going to take a cup of water. Uh, we're going to take the rice that I have here. You're supposed to use uh, Valencia or Arborio rice, but uh, I was not able to get any of that um, as stores run out of stuff during uh, COVID times. You know, it just didn't really come through this week. Uh, so instead, I'm going to be using sushi rice because the only other rice that I have is uh, long grain rice, and they specifically say to not use long grain rice. So, you know, there we are. Uh, same with the olives. I'm going to be using some canned olives instead of the uh, instead of what they recommend because, again, I'm limited in what I can get right now. But that's okay. We'll make it work and it will hopefully be delicious. All right, so let me go ahead and grab a bowl here and we'll go ahead and get started. We've got our bowl here. I'm gonna put in a cup of water. Uh, we're gonna put in about half a cup of rice. So let's grab this here. I actually got the sushi rice a couple of weeks ago for something else and never used it, so I was pretty glad that I had it on hand when it came to, when it came time to actually make this. I'm going to take a half cup of rice, which is a little bit less than that. All right, half a cup of rice. I'm going to grab some water that's actually a little bit more than a cup there we go that's approximately a cup and then we'll grab some salt Then I'm going to go ahead and take this over to the microwave. Just going to make sure all that goes in and it's mixed up a little bit. Um, I'm going to take this over to the microwave. I'm going to pop this in for um, however long it told me to, and I should have really looked at those directions again. Uh, six to eight minutes. We'll start off with six minutes and increase it if we need to. Okay, so got our rice in. Uh, now it's time for the chicken. We'll be patting that dry with paper towels and seasoning it with salt and pepper. Uh, my chicken's actually probably still a little bit frozen because I didn't pull it out of the freezer till a couple of minutes ago, but it should be unfrozen enough. Yeah, that should be fine. We've got our chicken there in a bag. I'm going to go ahead and grab one of my favorite tools, which is the floppy cutting board. Stick that out of the way for a second. 
And the floppy cutting board is just here to protect my uh, bamboo cutting board from any chicken juices, which I don't really want to get all over that. Um, it probably wouldn't really harm anything, but it's a pain to clean. So I'm just avoiding it. Go ahead and just pat this dry. I'm going to go ahead and grab my pepper as we season this. And I do know already that I'm going to need to uh, do a little bit of extra cooking with this because it is still partially frozen. So we are going to need to cook it a little bit longer than the instructions recommend um, just to make sure that it'll be okay. Let's see here. So we're going to pat it dry, salt and pepper, and then after that we'll be moving over to the stove. It's looking like a fairly generous seasoning of salt or of pepper rather. Here's the salt. Again, I'm being pretty generous with my seasoning. Because I like to have well seasoned chicken. Put the salt away, and then a little bit more pepper on the bottom. All right, so that should take care of our chicken. So I'm just going to slide this slightly further away so that I've got a little bit of corner here, and we'll start looking at that uh, chorizo, actually. Move that rice out of the way. Move this, rotate. I do not have an abundance of space in my kitchen, unfortunately, so. It's always a struggle to try and find enough spot, uh, enough space for everything. All right, so we're going to need four ounces of chorizo sausage. So we just need to get my trusty scale, which is surprisingly slippery. And then we're going to need my chorizo. It's really less a sausage and more just a tube filled with filling. Let's see, I should have how much was in this? Doesn't say. Looks like nine, probably about nine ounces. So we're going to end up using just two thirds of it. That's just going to kind of be the back of the envelope math I'm going to do there. Um, so let's take this over to, I'm not even going to bother weighing it out, I'm just going to take it over to the stove and get a skillet ready. I should probably transfer this over to the stove so that you can actually see what I'm doing here. All right. That's right, I've got some fancy stuff. All right, I've got my seasoned cast iron here. Grab a little bit more vegetable oil. Plop that in. We're gonna get this warm. It's supposed to be on, um, looks like, it recommends medium high. So, sure, why not? usually what I stick stuff on to start with anyway, so that will work out quite nicely. 
definitely going to be interested to see how the uh, the secondary camera works. I haven't used it before. It's a different uh, different device. So let me know what you think. Meanwhile, it looks like the rice is still going. I'm going to let that sit for a minute. We're just going to wait for this to get nice and hot. I'll grab the chorizo and just finish opening that up while the thing on the stove finishes it doing its thing. Yeah, this does not really seem like sausage so much as it seems like filling. Not that familiar with chorizo, to be perfectly honest. But I, I, I think it's supposed to be denser than that. Oh well, it might fall apart a little bit more than it's intended to, but that doesn't mean it won't be delicious. I'll bet that it will probably be very delicious. getting this all nice and hot. That oil is starting to get close to shimmering, so that means we're getting close to where we would like it to be. That's nice and hot, so we're going to go ahead and just take about this much here. Oh, I missed this instruction here. It's supposed to be sliced into pieces. That can happen. I'm not always the greatest about reading directions. We'll do what we can here. really hissing quite a lot. So my previous microphone setup was on a headset, which meant that I couldn't actually tell when stuff was hissing like this, which was a problem because then stuff would start to burn. So now I can tell that it's hissing this way. Still not going to be able to do much about it. But hey, at least I know it is. All right. That's looking a heck of a lot better. Making you hungry, I think that's the point. I mean, more or less, at least. All right, so we're going to see if I can't flip some of this stuff over.
Yeah, I'm really thinking the chorizo they were talking about is definitely more of a sausage. And this is less of a sausage. But it doesn't matter. It'll still taste great. And that's the important thing. Yeah, I do actually have some ambient sound headphones. They're, uh, they're just they're uh, wired, and since I am in a different room from my computer, they don't work out too well. And I figured that it was, uh, this is a little bit more natural anyway, because I'm able to just kind of walk around and I've got a body pack on. Yep, so this is definitely not the slices of sausage that I think it was supposed to be. But, as I keep saying, it is still going to be delicious. Turn down the heat a little bit because I think it's going to burn. Now we're going to take these off. Now that we've got it browned, we rendered out some of that fat. And now we're going to go ahead and grab our chicken. Off the cutting board. And just gently lay it down in here. And like I say, this is, uh, this is going to have to cook an extra couple minutes because I do, uh, it was frozen. So... All right, so this is going to take a little bit longer than it's expecting. Let's see here. What am I? So now we have the chicken in. We're going to finish uh, cooking this up and browning it on all sides. Um, in the meantime, we can start working on that onion. So we're going to need to get an onion and chop it up fine. Well, we can do that. So back over here, I'm going to get rid of this. Grab an onion. And they always say things like, oh, grab a small onion. I'm like, my onions come in one size, generally speaking. I know I can get them smaller, but you know, I'm doing a lot of my grocery shopping online these days. So, you know, really, it's hard for me to say, oh, yes, I just want a small onion when the store is just like, oh, yeah, we've got onions. I really feel like a lot of these instructions work better for times when you can actually walk into the grocery store and pick out exactly what you want. Which is which would make sense. I mean, and these were these have been written, you know, over the last couple decades when you could just walk into a grocery store. But it does make it a little bit inconvenient for times like right now. when I can't do that. Alrighty. Got our knife. Go ahead and rinse this off. Probably should have done that before I started cutting into it, but whatever. Looks like I got all the slimy skin off of it anyway, which is what I was trying to make sure that I didn't have. And... I 
They're also always like, oh, yeah, chop it fine. And yet, how do you determine exactly where fine is? I know that there's an actual definition out there. I'm just too lazy to figure it out. Or, well, I'm too lazy to look it up. I do just fine on my, my how it tastes and everything. So I'm not, it's, this isn't like a serious complaint. It's more just random observations from some guy who just happens to be cooking at the time. Which, to be perfectly fair, is like nine-tenths of what I produce. I think that that is a reasonably fine chopped onion. I could chop it finer. There's still some bigger chunks in there, but you know, a little bit of added texture is not a bad thing. I always keep dropping onion on the floor. There's a reason I always sweep up after I cook. Because I can be a little bit messy when I'm in a hurry. Here, how's this doing? Still got a little ways to go. We're going to put a little bit of pressure on that. All right, so we're going to be putting in the onion. That's going to take about five minutes. Then we're going to do tomatoes. And for the tomatoes, uh, we're just using canned diced tomatoes. And I happen to have a can of that here, which I'll put on top of the olives. And what else am I forgetting? Oh, garlic. Garlic would be a good thing to make. We're going to need a couple cloves of that. Two garlic cloves, which really means more like four, because they always go weak on the garlic. Can't have too much garlic. Garlic is one of those things that there is never enough of until there's too much. And really, how can you determine if something's really too much garlic? I posit that you cannot. I did get around to, as I've, as I've mentioned before, I knew that there was like a trick to do garlic cloves really, really fast. And I was always just kind of, you know, I should really look that up one of these days. I did finally do that. In case anyone was really like, wonder, is this just one gigantic clove? Okay, this might actually be. All right, looks like two cloves for us. For this, this particular garlic bulb, two cloves will be enough because this is one clove. This is the other clove. So there we go. One clove of garlic. Actually, that one's old bruised. So we won't be using that one. We'll just use one clove, one clove of garlic. So if you whack it, that paper shell comes straight off. Which is exactly what you want. Give it a quick rinse. Get rid of this paper here. And I think we just need to mince this up. Yeah, just mince it. Cool. It's probably not the greatest position for that camera to be in. Yeah, it's actually not too bad. All right, sweet. We'll just go ahead and mince this up nicely. My knife skills need a little bit of work, but hey, at least I haven't 
horribly mutilated myself yet, all right? That's the standard of whether or not you're successful. Pretty sure. All right, so we've got our garlic, we've got our tomatoes, so those next couple things. See, after that, we're going to need to do the rice, which I will check on after I turn this over again. Try and make sure that we've got this brown on all sides. Rice. The rice is sticky, but it appears to have absorbed the water. I'm going to say that that is done. That chorizo is looking pretty great. The audio stream bit rate. Ah, my audio stream looks fine. I don't know why Google says that my audio stream is low. I'm guessing it must have dropped to zero for a second. Interesting. All right, so this is finishing up. Um, so while that does, I'll just come over here for a second. I'll just talk about my new uh, mic pack because I'm sure that's what everyone tuned in to watch me talking about my mic pack. But so I just got a little wireless mic pack. It's plugged into my computer in the other room and my audio mixer. And up on my apron, I've got the uh, capsule. So hopefully the audio quality is a little bit better, or at least not worse. I'll take same, same or better. Same or better would be good. All right, and then this is gonna be something tonight I haven't really used much of, and that is saffron. Um, so I'm looking forward to kind of using that because we're gonna be doing saffron rice. Saffron rice with sushi rice, I add, uh, which is going to be a little bit different. I don't know that anyone really recommends that. But it's what I'm going to do. Because I can. All right, we're going to transition back over here to the stove. I think that's pretty well browned. We're putting that with the chorizo. That pan is very, very hot. So I'm going to be very annoyed with myself for touching it. We're got a couple more tablespoons of oil in there. And we're going to go ahead and grab our onion. Drop that in there. Once again, using my pastry knife slash bench scraper, which is one of my favorite things ever. I have many favorite things, but this is definitely one of them. We're just going to get this onion uh, until it's soft. It's going to take uh, about four or five minutes. Maybe a little bit less. And man, I got to tell you, there is nothing as good as the smell of frying onion. Like it is, it's one of the greatest smells in the world. It just smells of like deliciousness and happiness and since it's in here with the fat from the chorizo and from the chicken this is indeed going to be quite something quite special it's going to pick up a lot of that flavor and add it to the onion we are taking it to full caramelization uh, one, actually one of these streams I'm thinking that one of these streams I need to do like just kind of a basics thing. Instead of doing a meal, 
just kind of walk through some of the basics that make things taste good. Uh, so we can do uh, like caramelized onions, which are basically awesome. Um, I can show off how to use a rice cooker or just how to make rice on your own because a ri rice is one of the staples. In a lot of my dishes, I use rice a lot. And then maybe some pasta as well, just making uh, perfect pasta. I don't, I don't pretend to be the expert at pasta, but I have read stuff from people who I would say are a lot closer to it than I am. And there's a few tips that, they, uh, that they've recommended that I've picked up. Um, and I can, I mean, Kenji Lopez all, um, who is awesome and everyone should be subscribed to him because his cooking is just phenomenal and easy and approachable. But he, uh, he you know, talks about how you should really just fill up your pasta. Like if you're doing like elbow macaroni or something like that, uh, fill it up to just above the height of the pasta and then boil it. And then by the time it gets down to the, down below the top of the pasta, it's done. And that, that's the perfect al dente. And you know what? That's completely true. It works perfectly. So uh, I'm really thinking that one of these days I need to actually just do something like that. Because I've had a few people, a few friends ask me how to do specific things. And so I might just kind of collect up a few of those uh, requests and uh, just, just see what people think about something like that. Um, so if anyone's got anything that they are interested in learning how to do that they never quite got to or they just want to see a different perspective on it, I, I do not pretend to be an expert in any of it because I am, I am just a humble amateur chef who likes cooking in his Life cooking after work, so just a just an ordinary uh, ordinary home cook. But if you're interested in seeing a different way of doing stuff, or seeing how I would approach certain things, um, drop something in the comments or in the chat, and uh, we'll we'll see what I can get around to. Uh, be sometime over the next week or two, probably. Just I uh, just like doing different things. All right, so we've got our onion in here. That's looking really good. It's not quite to the point where I would say that that's done. And this isn't actually, you know, this is, it looks like the onion's caramelized. It's not. It's picking up, uh, a lot of that's from fat from the chorizo. Uh, but I can tell you it's going to have some of the flavor from the uh, caramelized onions. And... It's gonna taste pretty good. Turn up the heat a little bit here. We're gonna get that back up to medium high. A lot of the recipes sort of assume that you're cooking on gas and that you can instantly change temperature. I can't, because uh, I'm cooking on, obviously, an electric coil stove. Uh, so it takes a little bit longer for stuff to heat up and cool down. So I can often get away with adjusting temperatures basically, differently from what they say in the recipe. Yeah, there we go. Okay, here's the heat gets applied to it again. The crackling sound gets a little bit louder and it just really starts to uh, take off. All right. We're almost there. So we're going to be putting in the tomatoes next, and then the garlic and the saffron, which, I, again, I, I've never really done much with saffron. It's always been one of those things that I've, I know that it tastes good. I've, I've had saffron rice before and other dishes with saffron, and it really does taste great. But I've just never done anything with it, personally. It's, it's kind of pricey, uh, which definitely limits it, but you also don't use much at a time. So... You know, a $20 thing of saffron could last you a couple of years, depending on how much you actually use it. If you don't use it at all, it you know take even longer. Tandoori chicken or a good curry. Those are good options. I actually, uh, I've been meaning to make some really good curry. Uh, tandoori chicken, I, I, you know, I've never tried. Um, so that, I'll, I will add that to the, uh, I'll add that to the list of things to do. Right, 
here goes our tomatoes. I realized after I got all this started that I was doing this in my cast iron. And you're not really supposed to do tomatoes in cast iron. It's not, it's not very good for the uh, seasoning on it. It's nothing to do with taste or anything. It, it really is all to do just with the seasoning. But uh, probably should have used one of my other skillets instead. But oh well. It won't hurt it. I'll just have to re-season it, perhaps. I looked over at the instructions. I just realized that it said, uh, with, with juices drained. I hadn't done that, so... Oh, well. Like I say, I am not a professional chef. I am a home cook. Who likes trying new things. So we're going to go ahead and let that uh, go for another couple of minutes. Um, just to let that kind of soften and darken. I'm really glad I put the camera up over there. Because uh, there's a lot of steam coming off of this. And originally it was supposed to be kind of like a foot closer, which, you know, you wouldn't have been able to see anything. Especially because, I mean, both because of the angle and because, you know, you would have been directly in the uh, line of steam. Yeah, that smells pretty good. Sounds pretty good, too. We're going to get a uh, half a cup of water. Already got the tomato juice in there, so we won't need to do that. I'll add a little bit of extra water to kind of make up for that. So it says half a cup. I'm going to put in about two thirds of a cup instead. Because I messed up and uh, put the tomato juice in when I shouldn't have. Which happens. Those tomatoes are looking really good nestled in there with the onion. I think that those are getting nice and soft and a little bit darker in color. I'm going to go ahead and pour in that water. Yep, I think that's looking pretty nice. Oh, I was supposed to already add the garlic and saffron. Just one of those days where I uh, keep reading stuff slightly out of order. Not a big deal. It'll still be good in the end. There's that, and then over here's the saffron. So yeah, we're really only using a very tiny amount of saffron. This actually might be a little bit too much, but it'll be okay. All right, I'm going to let that simmer for a second to kind of get some of that flavor out. And I'm going to go ahead and grab 
rice. Which did boil over a little bit, but that'll be okay. Gonna kind of break it up a little bit here. We're going to go ahead and just stir this in. And we're going to bring everything up to a simmer. After it's nice and fully incorporated, this is looking pretty good. Oh, and this does want me to simmer until the rice is tender and liquid is absorbed. I really wish I'd read that whole thing about covering earlier because I would have absolutely used a different uh, a different pan from the get-go but you know what it is not not too late for me to dig through all of my stuff and I am going to swap uh, pans here because if I need to be able to cover it I can't cover my cast iron effectively This is a highly complicated maneuver I call trying to cover for my previous mistakes. I'm going to make sure all this stuff gets scraped off. Trying to effectively control a big hunk of cast iron metal with one hand. Ready? We're going to slide that over there, put this back here for the moment until it's cooled off and I'll be able to wash it off. And then we're going to let this come right back up to temperature, should not take long. I lost a little bit of water while doing that so I'm going to go ahead and add just a a little bit more. Not too much, we're just trying to get rid of the, try to replace what was lost. And that's coming back up to simmering right, right away. We're going to go ahead and cover this and reduce it to medium low heat. So that's gonna start cooling down again. So hopefully that will, uh, that will take care of my previous mistakes. It'll preserve the seasoning on my cast iron, which of course I appreciate because it is a little bit, you know, it's not hard to put it back on, but since I can't, I'm not in a place where I can build a huge fire and get it really hot and do that over the course of an afternoon a couple times. It makes it easier if I don't need to. All right, so this is going to take another 8 to 12 minutes because that's just how it be, I suppose. So while we wait, I'm just going to clean up over here a little bit because if you clean up as you go along, you never have to do any cleanup at the end because it's already done for you. Save these diced tomatoes. I've got something else I can use them in. So I'll pop those in the fridge. Having other stuff that you can use things for is kind of the key to cooking. Just always make sure you've got multiple things that you can do.
with whatever you have on hand. And yeah, looking at the audio meter, it does look like my audio bitrate does drop to zero, which explains the warning that Google keeps popping up on me. Because in order to get this thing to uh, hopefully sound as good as I'm hoping it does, uh, I had to put a noise gate on it, which drops out everything after a few seconds, or a couple milliseconds of me not saying anything and no other audio coming in. So I've got other noises that are around. And probably no one's interested in those. You're presumably here because you're interested in the uh, cooking. Which, you know, you're currently looking at a whole bunch of uh, stuff that's just sort of simmering. Underneath a opaque lid, so that probably makes the whole... Uh, watching somebody else cook thing a little bit more difficult. But hey, it's only temporary. I could always put on the uh, nice gentle music. Figured this time I'd at least, you know, show off kind of the whole cleanup process. Because I feel like the whole cleanup process is really something that not enough cooking places talk about. Because, I mean, obviously, if you, if you make something, you've got to clean it up. If you're cooking... You know, there, there is a process of cleanup that has to occur. If everyone just always pretends that it, it doesn't, then that kind of gives an unrealistic expectation of exactly how much work goes into a recipe. None of the recipes that I do are difficult. They're within the uh, reach of basically anyone. And that includes the cleanup, although many, in some cases the cleanup's easier than everything else. Not mac and cheese. If you, if you forget the mac and cheese in the pot for a couple of hours, or honestly, even about 20 minutes, then it just starts getting really hard and you gotta start scraping it out. And no one likes that. Nobody enjoys that. So I'm wondering maybe what I should do here is uh, put soft music on at the very back, just very quietly. and whisper into the mic about everything and corner the market on uh, home cooking ASMR videos while people clean up. Don't think I've ever seen that recommended to me on by YouTube. By YouTube. Alright, and that is most of this cleaned up. I've still got a couple things I'm using. Oh, I for, should probably put away the uh, chorizo. And for that, I'm just going to grab a bag, I think. And I'm just going to put it in there. So all in all, this recipe really doesn't have the, that bad of a cleanup time. You use a couple pots, you use a couple pans, you use a knife or two. I guess I still have that bowl of rice, but I mean, that's just giving me a soak for a little bit. Because you, while I could scrub it all out now, that's just, that's no fun. So yeah. Yeah, I think I'm gonna just stick the music on for a couple minutes here because I don't I don't really have a whole lot to say because I'm not really 
not really doing much right now, so I'm just going to stick the music on for a couple minutes. And uh, I'll be back shortly, I suppose. Okay, I'm, I'm back a little bit faster than I was expecting because I, uh, first off, uh, chili or jambalaya or pot roast, uh, slow cooking streams, I actually have thought about that. The, uh, the only the reason I haven't done it yet is because I need to probably work out a different camera solution because a lot of that stuff will take a couple of hours and I am not certain that my cameras will last that long. I'm using uh, some old cell phones that are pointing off to uh, my local computer and they get extremely hot so I have to figure out some way to cool them down more actively which is possible and but it's part of why I haven't done it yet 
Um, and secondly, I realize that I still need to actually play with these olives a little bit. Uh, they need to need to be able to cut them up. And so I figured that I should probably do that on stream because it is part of the actual cooking process. So we're going to be quartering these. The way that I'm going to be doing that is just individually cutting them in half and lining up all the halves and cutting those again. Because that just seemed like the easiest way to me. Which means who knows if it is or not, but it's the way that I'm choosing to do it. And then uh, apparently I was actually also supposed to slice up the chicken, so I'm going to blame actually the format of the recipe here and not my lack of reading comprehension. Uh, I, I really like America's Test Kitchen. They're really good at with their recipes, and usually they're really good with their uh, recipe formatting. But in this specific case, I feel like their recipe is perhaps a little disconnected from the actual ingredients and that it's easy to lose track kind of where you are in general i prefer more steps that are a little bit simpler for each step than i do you know one big long list that's just me that's personal preference there's plenty of people i know who prefer one big long list um and i find it kind of depends on exactly what i'm doing for things i'm unfamiliar with like you know this uh, more directions are usually better. So other people are probably different, which is fine. You're all allowed to be wrong, but, uh, you know, it's just my personal preference. I like to have, uh, shorter or more longer lists of shorter instructions. We're just going to finish cutting these up and quartering them, uh, approximately. And then I think we'll be able to stir those in. This recipe also calls for olives, uh, or for peas rather. Uh, that's something else that I haven't been able to get this week. Uh, apparently the store was out of frozen peas. I'm not quite sure how you run out of frozen peas, but somehow they managed it. Um, I guess there are probably just a lot of people who really wanted peas. But, so we're going to be skipping that bit, unfortunately. It's a pity because I like peas, but can't do much about that. So that's another alteration to the recipe that I'm making. Actually, might be more olives than I technically needed. I'll just say that I'm making up for the lack of peas. Everyone likes green olives, right? Since I have so many, I'm not too concerned about being perfect. All right, so we've got our olives here. I'm gonna grab the chicken and we're gonna slice that up. I do know this chicken is not fully cooked. That's fine, it's gonna be cooking longer in the, uh, inside the uh, rice mixture. It just says sliced about a quarter. Yeah. We're going to be kind of cubing this a little bit. Just roughly. And yes, I know I didn't get the protective a cutting mat that I'm usually so insistent upon. But I figured that in the interest of time, I'm just going to do it this way. All right, let's 
check out that rice. I think that's looking pretty good. It's slightly burned in a couple spots, but that's okay. I'm kind of used to that. It smells amazing. So we're going to go ahead. I think we're going to be dropping the olives in here. Um, yes, so... Olives, chorizo, chicken. Olives. I'm gonna grab the rest of the olives and the chicken here. And the chorizo with the accumulated juices. ahead and get this mixed into here so everything can finish cooking up especially that chicken which is still very raw kind of piling some of the rice over the chicken to help insulate it keep some of the heat in Definitely keeping the chicken, I'm nestling the chicken down at the bottom so that it can cook. And I'll probably have to stir that at some point. We're going to increase the heat up here to medium high. And then we're going to just kind of uh, cook this. I almost feel like this should go into the oven, to be perfectly honest, just to kind of finish it off on the top. I know that's not what you're supposed to do with it, but I sort of feel like that's what I ought to do. And presumably no one watches this because this is what you should do. This is all kind of what I did in the moment. With a few exceptions. There's a few recipes that I've done that I know pretty well that I am pretty happy with. But for the others, I mean, mostly I, I come up with a recipe idea. Or I find a good looking recipe, rather. And I just kind of go with that. Worked out pretty well so far. Can't really say that I can uh, complain about the new things that I've been able to learn and uh, practice with. So let's bring in just a little bit of music here. I'm not going to go full on music. But I'm going to bring in a little bit of music here. I can get it to uh properly register that. No, nope, maybe it doesn't like to do that. 
Oh, there we go. Let's bring that level way down here. I'm just looking at having it kind of be background, and hopefully that's a reasonable level. I can't actually hear it. I'm just sort of guessing. Hey, guessing's good enough, right? Flip that and turn it over and uh, cook it on the other side. Try and make sure that uh, comes out well. It's really nice to just watch it sizzle. Hopefully as soon as we're uh, done here with the chicken, then the entire thing should be ready to go. Should be pretty nice. Let's check the internal temperature of some of these pieces of chicken here to make sure that they are done. Uh, let's see, how can I get to that without moving the camera too much? Okay, hopefully that's still all right. Cool. Little bit ways more to go. It's getting close. I'm trying to not overcook it. Which is of course always the issue. It's like most of these are about 160, which is probably fine, but 165 is recommended internally. Maybe just another minute or two. Let's 
So tips for anyone else that's planning on making this, based just so far on my experience. Um, even after you think you've read through the directions, read through them again. Because I missed a couple of things that I shouldn't have missed. Uh, and make sure that you... I, I probably wouldn't do this again with the sushi rice. I feel like it's a little bit too sticky. So I would probably try and get either Arborio or Valencia rice. Um, and if I couldn't, then I'd probably pick a different recipe. But I feel like this would have been a little bit easier if I'd had the right rice. Because this stuff's kind of sticky and it's burning a little bit on the bottom. Apart from that, I think that this is about done, so I'm going to go ahead and just give it a quick taste. Well, that is definitely bursting with flavor. That's really good. I'm going to get a little bit more salt in there, I think. Not a whole lot, but just a couple of pinches. Because it needs that little bit. The salt kind of gives it that uh, initial burst of flavor, because that's what your taste, that's what hits your taste buds first. There's already a lot in there from the chorizo. It just needed just a little bit more in the front. But then all of the taste after that first initial burst of uh, slightly lacking something has been excellent. Let's give this a second bit a try. Yep, okay, that was perfect. Yep, it's got that little bit of saltiness now, which is exactly what I like to have on the front of my, uh, on the front of the flavor. It's got that little bit of spiciness and that little bit of saffron that's coming through kind of at the back of my mouth um, a moment later. So yeah, that is really, really good. So this is going to be an excellent dinner for me. And speaking of, I think that it's about time for me to actually serve dinner. Turn that heat off. I'm gonna pop this on for a second. We're gonna see if I can pick that up. Yes, I can. I'm just gonna move that off. Ooh, that's nice and hot. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and move that out of the way. Wipe off my cutting board, and I'm gonna get ready to plate this up. Just something I haven't really done before because, to be perfectly honest, it's kind of a pain to plate stuff up when you're carrying a camera around. So by having the camera in a fixed position, it's a heck of a lot easier for me to uh, do that. So I'm going to just finish cleaning off this cutting board quickly. Give it a quick spray down because I had that chicken there. I'll probably bleach it later. try to be pretty careful about any sort of cross-contamination in my kitchen because while the risk is probably not that great, uh, it would not be very pleasant. Alright, let's go ahead and flip this around. If I can... That... All right, I think that's right. We're just gonna go ahead and grab a couple plates here. One for me, one for my partner. Got a generous serving in each of these. Well, actually, each of these gets about half because this is a two-person meal. That actually does kind of make it easy.
I think I ended up putting all the rice in the other one and all the chicken in this one. There we go. So that is chicken paella with some chorizo and some olives. And I, I think that that looks pretty darn good in my book. So thanks for hanging out. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, thanks for the ideas about future streams. I will definitely look into those. And uh, until next time, keep cooking.